We've got everybody who's come in, so welcome to you all for joining us this Sunday morning Melbourne time. And obviously anybody who's from overseas, it'll be other times. I know it's about 5.30 or 6 p.m. I think in Los Angeles with Nancy. Um, welcome to you all. Um, for those of you who don't know Nancy, I kind of understand why, because she is not a big self-promoter. However, when you look at her extraordinary list of actors that she works with, um, I think it's kind of evidential that she's held in extremely high regard and she has a wonderful studio in Los Angeles, which I've had the privilege to go to and see Nancy teach. And that's uh, a class that really, you know, you can only get into classes there with her professional reference or by audition. And she's just really what I regard after watching Nancy work and the conversations we've shared. She's the real deal and she's from Canada, so why wouldn't she be? Nancy, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate your time with us. I know it's precious, and so you're very generous to do this with us. So oh, thank are you kidding? I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you, my love. Um, we've been trying to make this happen for a long time. I met you three years ago. And of course, we were going to bring you to Australia and then the pandemic happened. So at the moment, we've got a little window that we're looking to see if we can make it work next year. So fingers crossed. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Nancy, you um, believe that the key to everything for an actor is dedication and commitment to craft. You've said that technique is the key to confidence. And when I think about two of the actors that you've worked with, and of course it's an extensive list, and I will just say a few of the names before I speak about two actors in particular. You know, you've worked with Michelle Pfeiffer, Jared Leto, Josh Brolin, Zac Efron, Emma Stone, um, and of course Jennifer Aniston, and Australian actress Margot Robbie. And Margot Robbie has said that you have been absolutely instrumental in every character she's created for the last seven or eight years, that she doesn't do an audition, she doesn't walk onto a set without working with you first. And then there's something I heard Jennifer Aniston say when she was talking with Lisa Kudrow in that lovely little um, variety segment, Actors on Actors. Mm. And she said that she breaks down scripts with you and since working with you for the last seven years, and she was specifically talking about the morning show, she said it literally has opened a completely new door into acting and what acting means. And she seems to be an incredibly honest woman. And she was just very forthcoming in saying that she used to dread going to the set. And she said she knows many actors who were tortured by acting and she said, by working with you, an excitement has come into the work and that terror has really kind of subsided. She has a whole new tool belt that actually has given her confidence in her work. Now they're pretty impressive testimonials. So it begs the question, what work do you do with actors to enable them to deliver the kind of performances those two women, for example, have and in relationship to craft um, script analysis and the art of it. There you go. I gave you a big thing because basically I would love a beautiful masterclass on all of that with you, Nancy. Okay. Well, I'll try and incorporate as much as I can and please reroute me back if I, oh, yeah. if I wander. Yeah. Um, it is for me a craft it, and I hold that craft way high above my head. And I feel that it is above my head. So I know I take myself to task the same way I take any of my students, clients, anyone that I'm working with, directors, writers. And I, uh, I say to everyone, you know, how are you going to make this story be real? And the reason why everybody goes to the movies and they sit there and they think, oh, I could do this, I could do this, it's because there's no instrument they see, there's no dance, there's no easel, there's no, there's no sculpting, there's nothing, it's just us. And so everybody's a human, so they imagine, well, I could do that. But really what it means is taking this wild craft that is part of the, it's training this instrument on how to build a character, how to have intentions, how to raise the stakes, how to understand super objectives, and then kind of bring it into this character 
and and to my instrument and understanding how I serve a story. Script analysis is it for me. I mean, I don't really teach a ton of people that don't already know how to act. That's the truth. I'm not somebody to go to to learn how to act. I can teach someone how to act, but I'm better at a different conversation. I'm better at taking a, a communication that's already happened and saying, okay, so now do you know script analysis? Most actors don't know script analysis and it's a very peculiar thing to try and learn. But when I see a script or a play, it's a code, I see a code. And this code is screaming, yes, I know what you're saying, but what do you really mean? And this is what I see on every page. So when I teach these people, when I'm working with Jen Aniston or any anyone, anyone really, what I wanna know is what's this about? What is this really about? And what's your part in this? And when then when people start saying, well, I mean, I think this is about um, a woman who feels that she's at maybe the end of her career and all of a sudden she's aging out but she's so good at it that she should just be hitting her stride that she just wants everyone else to go die, please. True. And I say, amazing, amazing. I think that's what it's about as well. So now what we wanna do is build that person. We wanna go into her history, build how much work. We all know what it's like, how much work goes into being able to show up. And so what we have to do is build a background of a woman who deserves her voice, who is an expert in her field. Maybe we're gonna journal some of that. Maybe she's going to do some free association. Maybe I love it when people get into a bathtub at night and they, the lights are off and a candle is going and you fantasize what your life was. The more people go from here's the material, here's the person, the closer this becomes, acting becomes joyous. That's what I think I offer. Like if you say, what is it? I have so much respect and joy for this craft. Everything that school wasn't for me, the craft of acting is. All the difficulties and the lack of attention and the testing and the freezing up and and everything now I see oh I get it I just didn't understand my part in it and so when an actor can look at material and say okay what's my part in this oh I'm supposed to wake everybody up I'm supposed to be the character that um, believe something good can happen. Then we start walking down. I don't work a lot from someone's personal life on the day, but the same way that things matter so much to us in life, we know exactly what we want from the moment we wake up to the moment we go to sleep and every five million seconds inside there. I want a drink, I want to go to the bathroom, I want air conditioning, I, I want better glasses, I want, I want cream, I want, I want my kids okay, I want, I want, I want. Same thing for your, for your characters. But until you get in touch with your wants, and, and for me what's exciting is finding what is the parallel in. Now for someone like Jen, and I don't really think she'd mind any kind of communication around this, but just because I'm coming off of nine months of the morning show, it's really beautiful to find parallels of understanding, well, her level of celebrity, the character's level of celebrity, the lack of privacy, the character's lack of privacy, how Jen handles it, how Alex could never. So I love to know where are you like your character and where are you unlike your character? And these things become real beacons. Sometimes where you're not like your character is this insane freedom, a big holiday from yourself and you realize, oh, I can do this. 
I could, you know, if somebody has gone through a life of whatever they've gone through, I know they're in there. I know everyone's in there, whether they live in, from in there out or they live tougher or more covered. It's very exciting for me to help them find what they wanted to do this in the first place for. And that's because they probably felt too much when they were younger. They were probably a bit of a problem when they were younger. They knew that they understood things. They knew they had something to offer. They saw this be something and then they got scared. And so I just want to work with like, make the other people in you go away. I just want you for a bit. And I want to take you on this magic carpet ride plus my sharing of my code. And then I'll teach you the code until I evaporate. And now you're, you're coding. And it is, I mean, you know, Margo saying she won't do anything without me. It's just part of her process now. You know, she's a hard, hard worker. There's a few people I bet she wouldn't do something without. And that's because she understands as collaborative as the art of filmmaking or acting can be, she's a collaborator with regards to how she feels most prepared. Because not being prepared for some people, well, I mean, I would freak out if I was not prepared and had to be on a call sheet. I, 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 I could never handle that. Or get up in a class, not prepared. It's hard enough to share when you are. But at least you have to be a horse at the gate, you know? You have to be like, oh my God, let me add it. And the only way you can let me add it so that fear is replaced with enthusiasm is to know you have something to say. And when you have something to say, when you have something to say, it's, uh, hold on a sec, you keep jumping away and I don't know why. Hold on. You'll jump back, but then you're gone. I got you again. Got me? Yeah, I got you. But it's, I want everyone to get ready. I think people like working with me because then they don't need me. Because I arm them so beautifully with their own, I don't want to call it ammunition, but it's a pretty strong power keg because they don't need me because because they now own it themselves and that feels really like a job well done can i ask you um i want to just go to something i also heard jennifer anderson say she said that the material was so dense mm. and um and, and obviously she just has been celebrated through this performance. And I think the director, executive producer said it is the best thing she has ever seen her do, um, that there was an honesty and an openness and a depth. And so there's a combination. I know Larry Moss, who we'll talk about um, down the track, but speaks about when a writer and an actor join hands, something happens with the material with the actor. So obviously that material enabled something to happen, but she was very specific. She said the, 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 ta the taxing nature of those emotional scenes, those long monologues, there was something that the work you did together very specifically enabled her to be able to do that. And she said she couldn't have done it without you. Now, is that tied up with, um, when you talk about the code about how to read a script and what you're actually seeing when you read a script, not just words on a page and about mining a text for meaning. I think so, because what I can do is she can look at me. Anyone can look at me and say, okay, this monologue is like 45 lines long and I want to die. <laughs> right. And then I go, I so get it. Let's just read it. Do not memorize. Let's just read it. Okay. What's it about to you? And they, uh, I'm that's too busy feeling the pressure of having to do it. I can't see it. Then I do come in and I say, if you start with this intention, because the second I hear material, it just makes sense to me. Uh, I don't know. I, I, 
it makes sense to me because the pressure's not on me to have to make sense of it. So it's like this stunning gift that whatever gave me so I could hand it off. And I was like, hold on a second. I get it. This is you slamming the door on him for the last time. And she's like, huh? And go back to the material. Oh, maybe. Maybe. And I go like, I'm not right. Oh, fuck, I don't know if I'm right. An acting teacher is not right. We just have an idea. Nobody's right in this craft. It's just your interpretation. And if you can back it up, go for it. You know, we'll stay with anybody in the, if they work moment to moment, even if they've interpreted this so incorrectly. Because they're moment to moment. There are so many areas of this craft where you can, you get permission to rewrite things. But I think people like working with um, a coach because I feel like I'm the, I'm them over here. They're them there. They're them there. I'm them here. So I have no judgment. And all my goal is, is to enlighten to say, oh, are you really pissed off right now? Because I'm not getting that. I'm getting mildly annoying, but I don't get like that you are do or die. So whatever intentions you're choosing aren't strong enough and they're not in your body. And, and anyhow, if I'm being real honest, your voice like falls here. It's almost like you're talking like this to me and I'm thinking, well, it's not touching me. So what's your boat's in neutral. I think it's very interesting what you said before that the work you do with actors and really what is the meaning of this? What is it truly about? Then if there's a real understanding, they have something to say, so they need to use their voice. So mm -hmm. all of those things, but I think unless that is really known or felt, it makes it very, very difficult. And then it, the next point, Nancy, that you really encourage actors to do is to put their signature on their performance with their own unique interpretation. And that takes trust in themselves. And obviously when they work with you, there is trust that's already created. How do you cultivate that in the actors you work with and how do they cultivate it in themselves? Trust in their own choices. I mean, I believe the desire is usually there to trust you know it's only life that sort of scares you out of that or you start using it as a defense mechanism because you don't know that you're good enough but i believe everyone has a desire to trust and to be seen and to lean in with uh, with jen i mean it was when i was just working on that show specifically i would just say now's the time it's now's the time. It's always time for something. It's time for this now. It's time for you to share this wealth of internal, emotional something, all that you've had to go through, all that you've had to hide, all that you've had to smile behind, what's going on, all that you've had to live by, all that you've had to not complain about because you're too lucky to complain. Well, what do you do with that, you know? So we start opening this up and then she or any actor would get excited because like, oh my God, I, of course I get mad. Of course I want everyone to fuck off if I'm allowed to. I mean, of course. And now finally I have material that lets me do it, not only lets me do it, demands that I do it. Demands that I, I jump into this spot and I leave the fearful me behind. And I get to stamp this with all that I know. She's not being Jen Aniston in this performance. She's not, a, she hasn't lived these circumstances. What she does is understand what it's like to live in a world that you could go away because of cancel culture, sure. You know, so we'll grab a piece of some understanding and it's different for every single person.
every single person has their stunning wound that I'm like so drawn to because it's so human. And I know at my ripe old age already, the good, the bad and ugly is what makes you be able to create. When my dad died, all I thought about is get me to class. Get me to class so I can put this somewhere and change the world with it. My little world, change it instead of being pulled down. And I always say, I, I stand up and I do it. I won't because I'll you'll just lose me. But I say, I say, okay, get down on your knees. Then when you're in a lot of pain, you get down and you cry your eyes out and you know exactly what you're crying about. Then stop, stand up and say, wow, that's grief. Wow, that's joy. Wow, that's anger. You can then go back to it, have at it. It's not going anywhere most likely, you know? But I, I believe it's mental health. Anyhow, I believe the craft of acting is a healing craft. So if you get really good at it, you will have a better life. If you just skate on it, that's probably what your life's going to also look like. But you can really do some wild dancing here with this craft so that, yes, I can be in grief. Yes, I can. Then I can also, as an artist, stand up and say, if I ever give my audience less than that, Nuh-uh. Nuh-uh. And that's why an actor has to accept the good, the bad, the ugly. The divorce, the death, the illness, the children, the not children, the money, the no children, the, the no money, the agent, the no agent. It's all part of the fabric. And I know that's why Larry, I remember when I was in his class, I studied with him for like 12 years, 13 years. I just wouldn't leave and uh, I just would not leave. And, um, and I remember him, uh, oh, wait, what was I saying? Tell me, it was in Larry's class. talking about, um, we got the grief, the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, you remember one time you were in class with Larry? Yes, I do. Oh, oh my stars. <laughs> oh, my Come stars. back. <laughs> well, I've, I've got something actually on that. Yeah. Thing. Bring me back. Okay. So it is so evident that you have a love affair with this <laughs> craft and all the intensity that goes along with the love affair. And in my experience, Nancy, every great teacher does have that. So my question to ask you, as a young woman, when you came from Canada, you came over, how did that love affair develop, grow, set you on fire, and clearly set every actor you work with on fire so that they have literally grown in their, I think, um, understanding of what it means to be an actor and generosity when they actually do their work. Can you talk about your process along the way with Larry in those classrooms for 12, 13 years? Because I think you know, he is one acting teacher that unequivocally he recommends people to work with in Los Angeles and it's you. And you know, he's not very forthcoming around, uh, around that, born out of just the fact that he, the bar's very high for him. So can you just maybe talk a little bit about that? You as uh, an actress in a class, yeah. Larry, and what it gave you. I mean, uh, 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 besides everything, <laughs> you know, I mean, I was a lost child. I was a lost kid. I uh, I did not know if for sure I was going to be in my 30s, you know. I really didn't. And um, I remember leaving Canada, going to Los Angeles in some weird, hazy kind of, Oh, some guy, I don't, that, that's always going to get me somewhere, you know? So I, I left and I, I followed him and I got to Los Angeles and I did not know what I could do. I did not come from a family of artists or art, you know? I come from a family of lawyers and teachers and yet something always felt that 
I just knew that my insides felt way too much to ignore them. And they might not have worked in my favor when I was younger, but as I got older, I realized, whoa, that's a little bit of gold shit. To care that much, to be that passionate, to be that able to be intense, to still be, uh, those are like some nice things now that I'm in the art world, artistic world, artist world. And so class opened up this like alternative universe of I belong here. I belong here. I can speak this language. I'm not inadequate here. I am not that afraid here. I'm not going to fail here because there's no fail here. And it just became a home for me for sure. And his reliance, demand for technique and his, you know, intolerance for all things Hollywood um, really helped. Um, I remember he came to me so young and he goes, you know, Nancy, <laughs> you're going to be a character actor, so you better be really good. And I was like, what? What? What's that mean? I don't know what that means. He goes, you're going to be so good. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'll be so good. I don't know what that means. I'm going to be the so good, the goodest. And I just stayed there forever. And every Tuesday and Thursday for five hours a shot, it just was my life. And I got a job working at Samuel French, the bookstore. I left my boyfriend who brought me there and I just lived on the floor at people's houses and worked at Samuel French for seven years and studied and it was the most glorious it kind of repaired a lot of the the prior 20 years and I just felt instantly like I had purpose purpose and passion and all those things that every teacher apparently like thought I didn't have. <laughs> Nancy, thank you for sharing that. And I really, I'm so moved. I, I just honestly, I can't tell you it, it just, and it always touches me very deeply when young actors jip themselves by not understanding what technique can give them mm -hmm. and understanding that it's a craft that if they work at that, there's something that can be enlivened inside of them. Um, how do you think you get actors? Well, clearly you work with them in a way, but they already come in with that sense of kind of emboldened around something. But what do you think we live in such a kind of, it's a, a changed world and this sense of immediacy and exactly all this kind of influence, people having comments and judgments and criticisms coming at people left, right and center, which actually can make people feel that failure is even more frightening than it may have been. What do you advise young actors who are at the very beginning of their journey, Nancy, in a sense of kind of in giving themselves insurance against all of the, you know, the cuts of life that can come at them through this industry? Because it's not an easy industry and it's a glorious industry. Mm -hmm. What would you say? I mean, I really think that I, I hate to be a broken record, honestly, but it is, if you learn a craft, you're a craftsman. And if you're a craftsman when you're in your 20s, can you imagine how insanely untouchable you'll be in your 30s and 40s and how otherworldly you will be in your 50s and 60s and I know that you have to know that you can do something because our voices in our heads are not usually wired for you can do it they're mostly wired to you can't and you're going to be found out and now you got the job, but are you going to fuck it up? And do you know how to do this? And you really probably don't. And oh my God, they made a mistake. Those are the voices, unfortunately, of the bulk of actors for a long, long time. The only way to change the story of this voice is to know what you're doing. 
It's the same in anything. If you know what you're doing, you will not worry that you don't because that's preposterous. That's not even logical. And to learn a craft is not as hard as you might think it is. <laughs> it's this stunning, it's a stunning mountain. Oh, but it makes such great sense. And it's really exciting. It's, it's an exciting m mountain, you know, to think like, okay, what is a super objective? And they're like, I don't know, what's a super objective? Okay, what do you think a super objective could be? And they go, super objective, I, uh, something that you really want? Yes, exactly. <laughs> You're already cooking with gas. It is the most important thing in the history of the world to you. Every one of us has something that falls under that category at points in our lives. So does your character. What, you know, what relationships matter to you? Do you have a sister? Do you have a brother? Are you an only child? Yes, 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 whatever. Great. Your character has three sisters. Will we believe the way you speak to them? How do you speak to your sisters in life? Oh, I don't listen to a word she says, or that one is like walks on water. Excellent. Makes great sense. Well, guess what? The people in this story demand relationships also. And then they start saying, oh, I get it. So, so I have to like, in some ways, I'm recreating existences of life. Yes, you are. And you're never being arrogant enough to think that just because you have a sister, you can play a sister or you, you cannot. You'll just take it for granted. What I need you to do is endow this character with about three different situations. Uh, your first birthday party that you remember with her, her first time that she came in and brought a guy with her, a, a thing that you always fought about. And then your imagination is going, I am imagination based. I come from the Stella Adler, Larry Moss. Let's build this sucker. <laughs> I do not substitute it with people or things that I know. My rule of thumb, with substitution, if it grabs you, well, that's something. But if it doesn't, you are not using your Uncle Bert in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Bert. <laughs> you know, my, my age is showing. But honestly, if I read something and if I read it to myself and I go, oh my God, this is Laura. If my body does that, then I can, I can incorporate Laura. It's not Laura. So stop going crazy. It's yeah. not Laura. Yeah. But I can use so many similar things because my triggers are all Laura. Isn't that gorgeous? What a little gift. Didn't know that would be here. Otherwise I am going to build this relationship based on this here story. And the way I am used, me, Nancy, personally, is that this is my instrument. So it's going to go through me. But it isn't about me. And I think, well, that's just the way. That's the, that's the technique I was drawn to. There are many others that really can attract other people. And I tell students all the time, learn from many. Don't learn from one. You'll be like crazy town. Learn from many because you don't even know what's going to work for you. So I'm going to work for you for a point and I might work for you for a life, but someone else can work for you too. And you want to make sure you're not going to go to one restaurant just because you love the food. So eat a lot of places and learn what your body really reacts to. Learn what things bring it out, you know? Sandy Meisner, I, I'm, I, it's not my method, but that repeat exercise is in the acting hall of fame forever and ever, amen. Ever. You wanna know what that is. You don't wanna not know just because you did Strasbourg or Stella or Uda, you, this number two, no. 
you want to you want to learn one one day my client called me and she said oh, nancy i have a process and she hung up and it was like one of my favorite calls because she never knew what to do when she got a script and she did so we're guides we are guides and hopefully really good guides and good guides really care about the work they're they're uh, you know assisting in yeah i want to just ask you some questions we opened it up to some of the actors who are watching today and said if you've got any questions that they wanted me to ask that i would so if i do that there are, i might come back to some other things i wanted to talk about but this was something around mindset of the actor and it was what kind of a mindset does an actor need to both break into the big league and maintain a career there you know how larry talks about he says the two things that stop actors having successful careers a lack of technique and psychological issues well we're human we all have those um do you find with the actors you work with other than talent and good fortune and opportunity that they know how to embrace are there any common qualities that you would say from a mindset perspective from a psychological perspective that you see actors that really manage to kind of cut through and have significant careers they believe in themselves it's really a wild thing to watch i mean they they don't hear the noises anymore as a rule that you can't they've taken the leap i can and i do so at a certain point you have to make sure that you've got and this is where the psychological you know is that you've got to make sure that you are of sound mind and body and i believe if you learn a craft or if you fall into something without listen i've worked with many people that don't have a craft and have gotten successful and that's the truth so it happens but I know five people that it's happened to, you know, and I know it happens, but not everyone has magic dust on them when they're born. And for the rest of us suckers, let's just make sure that we take this seriously, that we pedestal it, that we do, as Larry says, chin ups to being ready. And you're not waiting to be given something, but you find a way to constantly be in class. I think any actor who's not in class is the most confusing little thing I've ever met. Because I don't know where else are you getting a muscle. It's like if I want to go to the beach and I don't go to the gym and I eat what I want, I know what I'm going to look like at the beach. You're right. You know, so it's like uh, A plus B equals. If you want to get strong in acting, and if you want to believe you can do this you, to match, then just start learning. It's like, it's like a piano. Yeah, some people know how to play naturally. Isn't that amazing? And most people have to learn. And every other art form usually has a tremendous amount of effort involved before they do it on their own and they are excellent at it and also and I, nancy i would say that you know it's always very impressive to me actors that you know they they do they get a career and but they continue or start to train for the first time like leonardo dicaprio you know he speaks about this he was about to do the avatar and he realized he didn't have the technique that he wanted to have to play that role so started working with larry Nicole Kidman, I know, just, you know, had a career as a young teenager. She's never stopped working. She's never stopped training as she's gone along. And I just think there's something. So there's a belief and there's a desire 
Anything to get better, can... though, to get better, to get you know, better. that has to be in it. I'm just going to switch a bit because of the sun. But yeah. that has to be in it also, is that you want to get better. You have to know that, like, acting's only going to be incredibly exciting if you take it to the next level. To think that we have the Meryl Streep's uh, uh, and, and the the... Judy Dench, the the uh, uh, Blanchette, like yeah. to think we're gonna have people that are gonna succeed so high. The only reason they're gonna stay in this game is because it's a step out of their reach. Yeah. So you have to demand more every time you do it. And I, that's why I always say, like, on series, I think they should fire all the actors. Like, honestly, by season four, season three, goodbye. And not because I'm being mean and I do want them to make lots of money. But it's like, number, the first season, you're just scared shitless. The second season, you start to really do beautiful work. And the third season, you are pushing yourself into something stunning. And then you start going down the line of, like, eh. So you don't care as much, potentially. It's not a rule. It's just I've seen. And I think that to stay electric is means to up your game. You know, it's it's the Forrest Whitaker who, who, who came to me, you know, a few years ago and just said, like, I've lost my mojo. But I still want to do this. But I feel like I just don't know... Um, I don't know how to focus in anymore. And I'm like, I'm be honored to focus you in. You know, because like, oh, my stars, how exciting is that? So everybody can come for whatever it is they need. But I think it's the, the tennis players, they're still practicing with a coach up until the second they go to Wimbledon. They can't not work on their craft. And I do believe an artist is like an athlete. Like, I'm not saying you need a coach, but you need a class or you need books or you need a group. You need somewhere because acting is a, a public, it, it, it's a public craft. And you better figure out how to do it as often as possible. And you should figure out a community because it is a really wicked thing to do on your own sometimes. I, I agree with you completely. And I think that sense of community, I think, is um, it's connection. And I think it's vitally important to stay connected in something because it's very easy. I see a lot of actors who are so gifted, Nancy, and who haven't gotten the breaks and feel dispirited and feel disheartened. And I spoke to a, an agent once and she said something which I thought was just marvellous. She said she believed actors should be in class because she says it gives them the dignity that they are an actor so mm -hmm. when they walk into the room for that audition even if they haven't had an audition in months they walk in with the sense of dignity i am an actor they've been doing it they've been working that muscle consistently so yeah thank you for, for i think that. that's a, a really true thing and and yeah. there are many actors that are not given their their due and it's a heartbreaking situation but like you said I believe you almost have to approach acting like a beloved hobby. Yeah. And, and if you approach it that way and still find a way to earn your living, you'll, you could have a really good life. Yeah, absolutely. And all these people that are so talented, you put them in a class, oh my God, they rise yeah. as they should yeah. because yeah. they've put themselves in environments where they're not waiting for someone to give them a job. They're just doing what it is they're meant to do. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's so connected with the healing propensity of this mm -hmm. art form. When you, I mean, I was really so moved when you spoke about grief and this is grief. And I think to absolutely experience something very fully in your life, because we seem to run so quickly and away in life from anything that's painful but I don't think actors can do that I think actors have to be willing to experience something very fully and I think when we do it does contribute to great health 
to emotional well-being because we've somehow integrated it through our nervous system in a way. Um, and you know, who was it? I think it was Angelina Jolie. She said something which I thought was quite amazing that she'd gone through something that was very painful and she was so grateful that she was going to make a film. She had a way of actually finding a channel for all of that, not as therapy, but as a way of actually giving meaning to it. So actors are very blessed with this extraordinary. And they have it at their fingertips because all they need to do is find a scene partner and a play and get to class. Yeah. Nobody has to get you an agent or a job or anything. You just need a working environment and you are an actor. An actor has to act. An actor has to act. Okay, so a couple of questions that came through from actors. Have you got any tools that you would suggest for how to stay in character on set during breaks when people are setting lights up and you have to kind of keep yourself kind of connected and engaged in ways that you can be ready when they're ready or also when a director might come to you and give you direction but sometimes in ways that can be antithetical to the artistic process or to what you actually need to kind of be as Larry would say, carbonated, ready to go. Have you got any kind of tools around that, Nancy, that you could kind of share? Yeah, I mean, I think you don't, uh, obviously if you're filming, I'm working with someone today and she's filming a scene where, I mean, her son gets in a car accident and, but she has three other scenes prior to that that are not emotional and, um, what she did was she reached out to me and said, can you send me an emotional trigger that I can look at in my phone? And we've, her and I have discussed them prior and a reminder so that it can settle me and I won't look at it till four o'clock today when I know I'm going to start the next scene because I cannot hold that line the entire day you cannot be prepped incorrectly for things. You also have to be careful because I see this a lot where actors know that this is a scene where I have to be emotional and they're so concerned with the inability to be emotional that they start a scene already full when the character doesn't even know the information yet. So this comes down to craft again because you shouldn't have to hold this. You should have to trigger this. You shouldn't have to wrap yourself in insanity all day long. What you have to do is know that a half hour before when I'm about to shoot the scene or if I have 15 minutes after I go for my touch-ups, I'm gonna go into my um, trailer, whatever it is, my room, and I have my pieces of music that I've already picked out because I know what my emotional triggers are. So I know there's those three songs that I have. I have that letter from my grandfather that I put in my drawer earlier today so that I could have it in case I didn't feel full. I have um, um, a, a sense memory exercise that can take me right back to a time that I know that I didn't want to leave. I am ready and none of those have anything to do with anyone else in the history of the world and that makes you a freestanding building so you don't have to worry that much same way when you say a director comes over and gets in the way uh, they know they can't not get in the way that's their job if they're getting in the way, that means you're in a terrible situation because they're not a good director and they're not following the name of the story and the line that's going and you have a bigger problem than this moment. Otherwise, they just want a different adjustment. They just want to see something else than you had planned. And that's your job. You're a, you're a card player. You want that one? You want this color? You want this shade of blue or you want that shade of blue? Because I got neon and I got powder and tell me where you want me to land. And he's supposed to be able to come in and say, like, hopefully he uses 
actor language and none of them actually do. I mean, it's like a 10% that of directors who don't have a million other things and P.S. they're scared of actors, it seems. They're just like, ah, that person, are they going to cry in front of me? Are they going to yell at me? I don't know. <laughs> and they're just worried about making their day, you know? So all you want to do is know that there's many different ways for you to respond if they start taking it in a direction where you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. I was really sure in this scene, I was proclaiming my love and you're sort of acting like I want them to get the hell out. And he could say, oh, you do. And you're like, huh, can you talk more about it? Cause I'm still not computing it, but obviously I want to. You know, you have to be malleable. Otherwise, it just doesn't work, you know? Even if you're right, even if he's wrong, it just doesn't matter. On set, I'm afraid he's right. Um, how do you think an actor manages a productive relationship with their acting coach so that the actor gets the most from the relationship. The coach can give the most productive to the actor they're working with. Are there any kind of lines around that? Or I don't really much like the word boundaries because it can sound somehow that there's off limits, but there might be, I don't know. Thoughts around that? I just make sure that anyone who works for me knows I'm not right. I care a lot, I've worked super hard, I've invested in this and I've done my homework and I'm still not right. I don't want you to adopt what I say. What I'm doing is I'm giving you an idea of interpretation. Now you have to still make it your own and I don't want you to give me your power because A, it got a secret for you. I can't get up there on that stage. That's you. So what I need is for you to filter this in to you. And if I say something, it's like, oh my God, no. And I go, great, it's no. What's right? What's yes? Tell me yes. I could give a shit if I'm wrong. Like, what? The, how could I be right? I don't care. I'm not invested in being right. I'm invested in opening your doors. And I think that that is very exciting. And I think that someone who is right, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? So I, I think it's really important to not give your power away, but also, here's the other side, to play the naysayer. Well, that's silly, because why would you pay to be in this environment, you know? If it's not the right fit, get out. But if you're playing the naysayer, then all you're showing me truly is what you do to yourself. I can leave and you're still gonna second guess yourself because now you've just transferred it on to second guessing me. Everything I say. And I have a client that does it to me and I like go insane. And I go, oh my God, are we gonna do this again? And that's what I say. I go, okay, come on, bring it. You're right because what? This can't happen because why? Everything is like, no. Right. This isn't creative. This is psychological. But I get it. And I know it's a big wound. But like time's ticking. So with that wound just going again, and you called it just looking into actors, and it, we all do, we all have a wound, no question about it. And there are wounds that kind of, in a sense, have a, a kind of so much in them that can be a benefit to us in the world, because we can develop a kind of a compassionate understanding of human beings. But what are the ones that you just say, you want to say to actors, please, you have to get this sorted. You have to get it cleared because no matter how much talent you've got, 
it is absolutely going to be in the way every time for you. Well, it's going to be a different thing. And that comes up a lot all the time. Anyhow, it's not like there's verboten discussions. If someone told me that something that happened to them, a trauma, a, a very specific event, well, I would say, you know, I might be able to discuss it as a friend if you were my friend, but you're not my friend. So you should go to therapy for that because my opinion on how to get better is irrelevant. Now, what I can tell you is it comes up every time and it's making you stop short of grabbing the character. So all I can do is cheerlead you from the side. Now I have a lot of exercises I do with people to unstick their stuck. Yeah. For sure I do. But I also, I don't believe a lot is sacred in the world. You know, we all have the same garbage, different types. I don't really, they don't scare me. I find mental health and fragility all beautiful conversations. I find, I find beauty in broken. I don't find a need for perfection. Perfection is a frightening concept that I just feel are, is repression, you know? So I feel like I can go so far with someone, but I also know where like, mm, I do not have the, the credentials to heal this, but I know it's in the way every time you work. Thank you, Nancy. Yeah. And it's a, a question I'd like to now ask because we're just getting close to, to time. Um, it's an audition question. And somebody's asked, if you can't obtain the full script for an audition, can you help with the key things that we can ascertain from the script to help pick up on clues to help with the audition? I want to say yes, of course, you know, but it's like without material in front of me, it's a hard thing. I think quite frankly, you do not need a script for an audition. That's a tremendous amount of investment and work. And all you really need to do is focus on your sides regardless. So I would consider an audition without a script uh, a, a bit of a gift. Because now you just know this is your work. Then what you want to do is read the, the sides. And you want to read the sides almost, if you could, I would tell you to read the sides before you know the character you're playing. Because then you'll just read it like a story. So like, if you can hide your name, hide the character's name for a second, just read it and go like, what's this about? Before you're already attached to a part that you're playing, because that usually means you've lost sight. Now you're just like myopic. And it's very interesting to see like, what is this truly about? What is the theme of this? And what is this character trying to say? And who is in the way? And if you start asking yourself a few questions, what do I want? How am I going to get it? Who's this person? Why are they in the way? What do I feel about them? And what am I hiding? You're usually hiding all your private thoughts and what you're saying is what you want them to think. And then you'll start getting a little excited thinking, okay, okay. So I want to, um, I want to get the smartest girl in class to let me see her page while we do this test. And I'm flirting with her and charming her and um, uh, joking with her and, and begging her to do it. And then I can come in from that place instead of, and don't go to memorization. Uh, 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 uh. Anyone who works with me knows how much I hate memorization. And I understand for you dyslexia and all that, and I get it, and, I, and then I get it. You don't have a choice, and I'm sorry. But for the other people, stay away from memorization as long as you possibly can. That is not the work to do. That's like icing and no cake. You're supposed to know how to read it and come up and read it and come up. 
You're not supposed to have it memorized so that 20% of you is in your head because you don't really have it memorized because you haven't even factored in in an audition how frightening it is to go do it. So now we don't even have our breath. And now our attention's merely on our cues. Oh my stars, we've stopped moment to moment altogether. You know, Nancy, in Australia, there's a slightly different thing with um, screen testing. They do want you to memorize it. For screen testing is different than an audition. Tell me, what do you, so an audition is- An audition is your first ups, no? What I mean, if I were screen testing, that means that they're thinking it's between me and three people. Is that not what it means there? It's slightly different. Audition screen testing can be interchangeable. Now, obviously, everybody's self-taping. So they put something down, they get the sides, they put it down, it's sent. The days of actors going into rooms has kind of escaping us for the moment, whether it'll come back or not, who knows? So literally for anything filmic, they put it down and then they send it in. So audition screen testing tends to be interchangeable. Okay, so I don't think of a, a taped audition as a screen test. Okay, tell me. A screen test in my mind and it how it is here is that means you're down as a finalist. Right, okay. So we call going in and doing a test in, in, in a studio. That's an audition, but it's a screen test. You're in. I know exactly what you mean. You mean when you get right to the end, they bring you in. You might work opposite the actor. That's what yeah, you're Yeah, I mean, about. there you're for sure memorized. Yeah, yeah gotcha. But gotcha. I think what I care about, and especially when people are putting themselves on tape, there should be a way for them to have the material still just even if you've memorized it. You know, you don't know when I'm coming up and down and when I'm looking at something and when I'm right here, but you will know when I've lost my place, like, or where I don't remember what I'm saying. And I feel like if you have to memorize, I get it, you can memorize, but please do not start there. Exactly. The, the only way to memorize something is familiarity. And the only way to become familiar is to put intentions behind an area so that if you don't, if you memorize something first, it's just like, it doesn't even have all the, all the uh, texture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah well, yeah. then maybe I mean, please don't put it first by any means. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it is because in Australia, they do expect you to be off book when you do, you know, when you self test or when you go in to do an audition, they expect you to be off. I um, think you America, tell them to call me. Say again? <laughs> have them call me. I don't agree. You know, my kid can memorize. I don't want to watch him act. So tell me, what's the reason? Because I know for Australian actors, when they first go to Los Angeles and they're told to hold the sides and to work, and of course, they do a great deal of work on it. That I know when I've spoken to Australian actors, it's taken a while to get into that and then they absolutely love it. What's the reason they didn't want that memorized when you go in and you do the audition? I don't know if they did or they didn't. Oh. I don't know that many people have my thought process. I just can't stand when an actor goes to memorization first. Yeah, yeah. Because then I lose the communication of what this is really about because now we're just regurgitating memorization. I think in Los Angeles, when people used to have the sides, is like, you know, if you get three auditions in two days, uh, what are you talking about? How can I possibly have this memorized? And that's not really what this is about, is it? It's about whether I've made some choices and I'm letting you know I'm a work in progress. Have you ever seen an actor uh, be filmed with his sides? No. No. So chances are, Everyone in the room should know at a certain point, memorization is gonna happen. But to put it above other things, baloney. But I understand. No, 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 but I absolutely hear what you're saying. And I think that's a thing, going to the words too quickly. And Stella Radley used to speak about that, didn't she? Going to the yeah. words too quickly. Yeah, it's not, it's not the lines, it's the life. And if you memorize it, good luck knowing the life. Yeah, absolutely. You won't know it, you won't even see it. Yeah. And I, t I like, if I was going to have a, like a tattoo, it's going to be like, it's not the lines, it's the life. Because these people hear the same words nonstop over and over. What they want to know is how can this be different so I can wake up? 
Your job is to go in there and wake them up. Hear this for the first time. Make sense of it. Let it come truly from you and your understanding. And when you're fighting for a relationship and the person wants to leave and you know in your heart what it is like to have loved and lost and wanted something and not had them, then you will go in there and fight for it. And it might not be crying like everyone else did because you know that when you went through it, all you wanted to do was like bang their head into the wall because they don't even understand. And it's like everyone in the room goes like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. And it has nothing to do with memorization. But I understand. So will you come to Australia? Next oh, my week? stars, yes. Oh, my stars. <laughs> I would love to come to Australia and teach. That would be so wonderful, Nancy. And in the meantime, um, before you do, um, the, the code that you speak about, and I don't think that's something you could share with, that takes time and that's part of the process. But is there anything that you would say to actors? Just, I know when I came to your class and you began the class, it was so beautiful, it was so inspiring the way you began the class was something that was really about life that you shared. And it felt to me that that was the beginning of the connection of the work was actually about our lives. Is there anything that you would say to actors that, you know, if your daughter, your son or anybody very close to you wanted to be an actor tomorrow, what you would say to them to cultivate something in themselves, the things that sometimes are less tangible. Is there anything that you would share I mean, I believe in going for your dream. I believe very much in knowing that you will have a really beautiful life if you figure out where you contribute best from. Because I think that is what equals a good life. If I can contribute and I can help actors and I can get people excited to uh, honor this craft, I I'm doing the best thing I can possibly do. And if someone believes for some reason that acting is calling them and they don't even know why and all they know is a lot of people say it's a really hard road and there's a lot of rejection. I mean, people don't talk about the glory of acting when you're introduced to acting. All they'll tell you about is, uh, is all the why nots. And the why nots don't matter. Yeah, they're part of it, but if you're meant to do this, if you're meant to wake people up, get people to care, get people mad about something, if you have passions, if you know that you, from your body with no instrument other than your heart and your soul and a little bit of your head and a ton of your gut, feel like you can change the world, then you should do this. And you should really commit to it. And don't worry about what doesn't come from it. It's wonderful. Nancy, I want to thank you so much for giving us your time today. And it was going to go longer, but the truth of the matter is you've sort of said everything that I think needs to be said. It's just been so full of joy, so full of um, generosity, skill, expertise mm. and it's not surprising to me that you do what you do in los angeles that really and i think about it just then those actors that do the work that we get to see you're a part of that such a big part of that experience happening and of course you know you stay very quiet behind the scenes i remember when i tried to track you down you were rather hard to track down and um so i really want to thank you for your contribution what you do and what you offer when you do the work that you do. And I'd like to say to everybody who's watching, just to know that we've had this experience with you today. It's just a great honor, a great honor to meet someone who's a true believer in something and cares as much as you do about something. And I will tell you one thing, in my classes that I've had for the last 15 years, nobody's famous, everyone's talented. You know, yes, my outside work has a lot of people that are uh, 
A-list or whatever they're called, you know. But great actors are great actors. And it is so beautiful if this is what it is that you want to devote your life to. We need the great people to do that because without it, we don't have anything. And so I just really, I don't want people to think like how far you have to go before you get to every single week in class, we get to. And I've seen better work in my class than I've almost ever seen on a set in my life. And um, I just want to remind you to commit, commit, invest with everything you got, you know? And I'd have to actually second that. I've seen some of the most exquisite work in classrooms that I've been in um, around the world. Some of the work that, you know, has never gotten to the necessarily to the professional stage or to the screen, but I absolutely second that. And I'd just like to say as an opportunity before we say goodbye um, on the 1st of July for any of the actors watching, if you would like to join our online information evening at our studio, we have one of Australia's most celebrated theatre directors who really, really wishes to empower actors and for them to understand not only what he looks for, but what they need to develop so that they can have the kind of careers they want. And something else, Nancy, that we've actually, a new initiative, um, I've been a, a practicing Buddhist for X amount of years, not necessarily a very good one, but nonetheless surrounded by excellent ones who mm. were great guides in my life. And um, we had the opportunity through, we're bringing meditation, Ayurvedic wisdom, mindful movement into the training of actors, recognizing how imperative it is that actors psychologically and emotionally come from a place inside of themselves, which is strong and wholesome. And um, we have a woman that's, you know, a master educator from the Deepak Chopra Center in, Los, in, in America, who's joined our studio. So I hope everybody can partake in that on the 1st of July and hear about it. We've got a scholarship program to support actors, to become well, to stay well, and to be able to make that contribution that we need in our world through the arts. Mm -hmm. So Nancy, you're gorgeous. And it's just been so lovely spending time with you. I'm really moved and can't wait to have you in Australia next year. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I've loved getting to know you. I, I have a, uh, I just think you're just the bee's knees. <laughs> thank you, my love. And you take good care. Look after yourself. Keep the balance in your life as well. And we'll see you soon. And thank you to all the actors who joined us today. Much love thank to you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks so much. Bye-bye, Nancy. Much love. Thank you. Bye-bye.